Hey y'all, what's good beautiful people? It's your girl Tay and I am here yet again with another update video. So definitely make sure you guys smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe, and then push your post notification bell button so that way anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. So are you guys seeing this sun? I mean, are you seeing it? I was just telling my kids like, where where, where did the winter go? We, I think we had what, maybe five days of rain out here in California uh, at least where I'm at I'm pretty sure other places have more but at least in the area where I'm at we have five days of rain and already the Sun is peaking as much as it's peaking I mean we already back in the 80s I'm, I'm not I'm not feeling it at all I'm definitely not feeling it at all you guys but uh, we're gonna jump into these uh, daily updates. Okay, that's what we're gonna be talking about today daily updates Let me check the general news and see if there's anything on there that maybe I put to the side I don't think that there is I don't see anything. All right, so let's go to our usual News source and let's see what's going on in the world today Okay, now I really don't know what this article is about um, I literally just saw unveiled chips um, and I'm not talking about potato chips. I'm talking about microchips. I don't know what these microchips are for, but we finna get into this to get uh, together. Okay. So this actually came out yesterday. It says us house leaders unveiled chips. Again, we ain't talking about lays. We talking about other chips. Okay. Um, uh, unveiled chips, China competition bill. Um, it says, U.S. House of Representatives leaders on Tuesday, uh, which by the way, you guys, is today Wednesday. Happy hump day, you guys. We're in the middle of the week. I love the middle of the week. But anyways, U.S. House of Representatives leaders on Tuesday unveiled a bill aimed at increasing U.S. competitiveness with China and supporting the U.S. chip industry, including $52 billion to subsidize uh, semiconductor manufacturing and research. President Joe Biden's administration is pushing to persuade Congress to approve funding to help boost chip production in the United States as shortages of of the key components used in autos and computers have exacerbated supply chain bottlenecks okay so they're talking about the chips that they need for our devices okay because i thought this was going to go in a completely different uh direction house speaker nancy pelosi said uh the 2900 page bill called the america competes act would supercharge investment in chips and boost u.s manufacturing and research capacity as well as advancing u.s competitiveness and leadership i don't understand why the United States wants to be a leader and I don't understand what to me the United States is not a leader and I live here and the reason why I say that you guys and we're going to go back to stimulus I'm going to be bitter Betty for just a, just just a quick moment um the reason why I don't think that the United States should be leading anything is because we've seen during this pandemic how other countries China being one of them um supported their citizens by giving them uh, uh, monthly reoccurring stimulus checks or whatever you want to call it to help get them through the time period in which they were not allowed to go out and actually work and provide for their families. Whereas on the U.S., they're arguing about how much money and the national debt and all of this other stuff and can't get themselves together even now for the Build Back, Build Back Better Act or whatever it's called, Build how do you say it? Build Better Back Act or Build Back Better Act, whatever it's called. Y'all know what, it's, what I'm talking about. The BBB, whatever it is, they can get things together to get that going so that we can get these uh, advanced child tax credits out there. But anyways, um, the Senate passed the U.S. Innovation and Comp Competition Act last year, which includes $52 billion to increase U.S. semiconductor production and authorize $190 billion to strengthen U.S. technology and research to compete with China. Again, why are you trying to compete with China? Let me, let, let me, let me just say this. Let me just say this. And y'all know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's no competition. There's no competition whatsoever. There's nothing that they can do. There is nothing, anybody and everybody, the dumbest person in the world knows how far advanced they are in China with their technology, okay? Um, they don't spend a lot of time bickering and arguing arguing over the nonsense that our politicians see are, are arguing about on a regular basis. So I don't even know why this is a conversation. But again, this is why I bring you guys this type of information because I want you guys to be more and more aware. I constantly, I'm finding myself now becoming more and more enlightened on what's going on in the world and the choices that I need to make for my family just based off of the things that I am seeing in the news and stuff like this why do you want to compete with China for what reason 
Why do you want to compete with China? I mean, I know those types of things help the world go round. It's all a part of the process and the, the economy and all of this other kind of stuff, inflation and whatever and whatnot. I get all of that. I understand to a certain extent. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's kind of like I feel like how do I say this? And I know somebody going to be mad at me when I say this, but I feel like for the United States to try to compete with China is almost the same thing as a man trying to uh, have a baby. Because they think that maybe they could do it better than a woman. There's no competition there. You can't do it. OK, so the House bill has key differences with the Senate version. It does not contain the 190 billion for technology and research, but does include 45 billion to support supply chain resilience and manufacturing of critical goods, industrial equipment and manufacturing technology. Funding could be used to relocate a manufacturing facility out of the countries of concern, including countries that pose a significant economic or national security threat to the United States. If anything, that's what it's about. I say stop trying to be a bully and stop trying to mess with people when they're not messing with you. Just mind your business. Let's worry about what's going on in the United States of America. Everybody's so concerned about what's going on in these other countries. They ain't thinking about us. And if they are thinking about us, it's probably because one of the, either the current president or our previous president said something or did something that he shouldn't have done. The House is expected to take up its version next week. If it passes, leaders of both chambers will negotiate to resolve differences. We're in an all-out race for the jobs of the future and to protect our country's global technological edge. Senate Democratic leader said this. This is Chuck Schumer who mentioned this. President Joe Biden said, the House and Senate proposals represented the transformational investments in our industrial base and research and development that helped power U.S. global economic leadership in the 20th century. Okay, so I think y'all have got the gist of this bill. We are going to move on from that. Hmm. All right. More news from the Capitol. 27 House members signed a letter asking Nancy Pelosi and Kevin McCarthy to bring stock trading ban to the floor. We come we came to Congress to serve our country, not turn a quick buck. Hmm. So I'm just going to read the highlights of what's going on here. Um. The lawmaker who led the letter wants to make sure that we're pushing for legislative action. Pelosi is now open to banning lawmakers and spousers from stock trading if members want to do that. 27 House members have signed on to a letter drafted by Democratic Representative uh, Jared Golden of Maine calling for House leadership to swiftly bring forward legislation to ban members of Congress from owning or trading stocks. Interesting. This glaring problem will not go away until it is fixed and Congress should not delay when we have the power to fix it, read the letter, which was addressed to both House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Perhaps, hold on you guys, where did it go? Come on back, come on back. Come on back. Perhaps this means some of our colleagues will miss out on lucrative investment opportunities. It added later. We don't care. We came to Congress to serve our country, not turn a quick buck. You know what? I can appreciate that. Finally, finally, somebody with some sense. Clearly, clearly our representatives in uh, 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 on either side are worried about trading. This is what I mean by they can't really speak for us and talk about the struggles that the American people are going through because they're not going through it. Most American people don't have money to trade or buy any kind of stocks. Yet and still, we have to have some, some politicians come forward and say, hey, that's not... That's not why we're here. We're not here to make money. We're not here to do things that uh, we know our fellow Americans can't do. We're here to make sure that there is an equal playing field so that everybody has the opportunities that we've promised that they would have for themselves, their children, their children, children, and so forth. Uh, so I'm liking this. The letter was signed by two Republicans, Representative Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania and Matt Guides of Florida, and 25 Democratic varying from progressives like Representative Rashida uh, Talib of Me Michigan to frontline members like Representative Susan Wild of Pennsylvania. Also signing it was Representative Tom Malinowski, a Democrat of New Jersey who Insider in March revealed had violated the federal stop trading on Congressional Knowledge Act by failing to disclose dozen of stock trades together worth at least 
$671,000. Malau, I can't say his name, Malinowski, I think is his name, whom the Committee on the House Ethics is investigating in the matter, has since placed his stock assets in a qualified blind trust and co-sponsored bills that would ban members of Congress from trading stocks. Okay, Golden's letter implicitly, no, implicitly, I'm sorry, well, I don't know why I added that extra syllable, implicitly references insiders conflicted Congress investigation, which has found that dozens of members of Congress and nearly 200 senior congressional staffers have failed to comply with the Stock Act of 2012, a law designed to combat insider trading by requiring timely disclosure of stock transactions. So they're doing stuff in secret, y'all, secret, when they're not supposed to. In an interview with the insider, Golden described the letter as an effort to further pressure leadership to act, building on existing uh, momentum driven by a spate of new proposals to ban stock trading by lawmakers and backlash to Pelosi's dismissal of the idea last month. Okay, so y'all y'all get the gist of that, all right? Y'all see what they worried about up there. Y'all see. Now, I hate to bring y'all more bad news, but we've got, what is this? Food recalls. <laughs> um, here's one of the unfortunate realities that goes hand in hand. This came out uh, on the 21st uh, with buying a regular staple of goods from your local grocery store. It's the fact that safety concerns sometimes result in a product's recalls to be aware of a mishap in a manufacturing fa facility. Packages not correctly labeling all ingredients. All kinds of problems can result in such a recall. In fact, those of you who recently bought spinach from the Little store, and that is L-I-D-L store. Store, you'll for sure want to be aware of this first recall and its details. Basically, it's a brand new recall action concerning little frozen shop, chopped spinach. Again, that is L-I-D-L. Uh, frozen chopped spinach. The company announced a recall after detecting traces of listeria. Um, it's a bacteria that can lead to potentially fatal illnesses in certain groups of people. Little sells the spinach in 12 ounce bags and a recall announcement posted on the FDA website has all the details, okay, including why you should stop eating this particular brand of spinach at home until you've confirmed it's not a part of the latest recall news. Frozen Food Development is voluntarily recalling specific lots of this branded 12 ounce packages of frozen chopped chopped spinach because the product has the potential to be contaminated with listeria. This is, uh, how do I, how do I say it? I just lost my train of, train of thought. This is uh, coming from the FDA. Okay. That's an organism which can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in young children, frail or elderly people, and others, of course, with weakened immune systems. Although healthy individuals may suffer only short-term symptoms, such as a high fever, a severe headache, stiffness, nausea, abdominal pain and diarrhea listeria infection can also cause miscarriages and stillbirths among pregnant women none of this uh is mild i don't know what's mild oh wait it didn't say mild it said short term it doesn't i don't i wouldn't want to have none of this for a day high fever severe headache stiffness nausea abdominal pain diarrhea uh and then the potential of a miscarriage or a stillbirth that is definitely not something that anyone wants to experience okay um so i definitely highly suggest that you guys um return to sender okay also important to know in terms of whether or not this product affects you, little stores across several states carried it, including Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New York, uh, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. All right. So, yeah, be careful, y'all. I think I spoke about this. Yeah, I talked to you guys about the macaroni and cheese in a different, I think in yesterday's video, so I'm not going to go into that um any more all right you guys so i think that is all for the news to today to today today let me go ahead and check in on emergency snap maximum benefits today is the what 26 we should see some states as being approved um for february but i am not seeing anything let me oh I take that back, y'all. I take that back. All right. So we have got one, two, three, four, five states. And I am seeing California on the list for January. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip this camera around and we're going to look at this information together. That way y'all can't come for me in the comment section by telling y'all I'm giving y'all wrong information. Because the information that I'm giving you, I'm getting it from the most reputable source, which is the United States Department of Agriculture. So let's flip this camera around. All right, you guys, hopefully you can see me. I may have to set this up up here. Um, okay, so let's go 
right here okay so i have not refreshed this i am going to refresh this now so you guys can see yourself and here we go for february okay let me change the color of this for february we have iowa maryland michigan wisconsin and wyoming all right now if we scroll up a little bit further for january you guys can see that we now have california that has been added to the list okay so i am going to take a look at california right now and see what info is available. Okay, so February 26, is that the information? Um, pretty close. So here we go, right here. If you guys can't see, this is for California and this is for January. Now, California is one of the states that pays after. They pay a month behind for the month, uh, uh, the month prior. So January allotments will be distributed in February. If we get approved in February, we won't get those until March. The ones that uh, California received this month in January were for December. But the date here is February the 26th, okay? All right, so... I'm not going to go over uh, the names, these, because I pretty much do that for you guys all the time. I do think that I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if I went over it yesterday. I'm not sure. We'll see how much time we have left in this video, but we're going to start with February right now. Okay. So for California, for January, we have been approved. It's going to be February the 26th. Now for February, we're going to go through these states together. So let's take a look at Iowa. Here we go. Okay, so for Iowa, we have it right here. I like to circle it so that you guys can see this information yourself. Here's the state name right here, Iowa. We will be providing the EA issuance with the normal monthly issuance between the 1st and the 10th. So Iowa, between the 1st and the 10th, okay? Maryland. Maryland is right here. State name, February the 1st through the 28th, okay? February the 1st through the 28th is all month long, pretty much. So sometime in February, you're going to get your benefits for Maryland. Michigan. Michigan, a state name is right here. February the 19th all the way up until February the 28th, okay? It says benefits will be February the 19th here through the 28th staggered over this 10 day period. Okay. And then a catch up file will be run at the end of the first week of March. Wisconsin. Wisconsin state name here. Wisconsin's will be February the 12th and then they'll do a catch up run April the 2nd for Wisconsin. And then Wyoming. Most likely between the 2nd and the 5th, but we'll see. Wyoming, Wyoming, Wyoming. Wyoming's going to make me work for it. Yeah. So this big old paragraph here. Here is the state name of Wyoming, where it says February 2022. And then it just goes to explain pretty much between the second here all the way up until the fifth. And of course, it's going to be based off of the first initial of your last name. So we have A through D, February the second, E through K, February the third. L through R, February the 4th, and S through Z, February the 5th. So that's why I always just say February the 2nd through the 5th based off of the first initial of your last name and benefits are going to be provided, uh, approved one day to be available the next day. So it gives the example here of saying if approved on February the 16th, then the benefits will be issued on the 17th. Okay. But I don't, I don't really think that that's going to matter. I think it's going to be between the 2nd and the 5th. That's all you guys need to know about that. All right, you guys, I'm actually pretty happy. So we've got one, two, three, four, five states that have been approved um, for February. Is that five? Yeah. So I think that's pretty good. Now, I think I will go over. Um, let me set this up right here. But I think I will just quickly try to run through the January dates. Okay, since we 
we got through those pretty quickly. So for January, starting off with Alabama, we have February the 1st, Alaska, January the 3rd through the 31st, Arizona, regular issuance, California, we have February the 26th, Colorado, we have January the 9th through the 14th, Connecticut, January 19th, and then all Fridays until uh, January is complete, Delaware, January the 26th, which is today, so check your cards, D.C., regular issuance, Georgia, we have January the 27th, the 28th, the 29th, and the 31st, Guam, we have January the 21st, Hawaii, we have February the 1st, Illinois, January the 21st through the 29th, and then the catch-up during the first week of February, Indiana, January the 5th through the 23rd, odd days only, Iowa, January the 1st through the 10th, Kansas, February 15th through the 24th, Kentucky, January 2nd through the 19th, Louisiana, January the 9th or the 8th, either way, you should have gotten them already, Maine, January the 7th, Maryland, all month long, so we're going to continue in Maryland all the way up until the end of January. Uh, Massachusetts, February the 2nd. Michigan, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Michigan, January the 22nd through the 31st. And then we're going to skip over to Minnesota, which is a new state that I don't have written down. So let's take a look at that. Wait a minute. Now y'all saw how this page just skipped. Okay, let's try this again. Minnesota. Okay, so it wasn't me. So for Minnesota, um, and I can't go back because it's not letting me go back. Oh, wait, actually, let's check December. Sometimes I do this when I need to see, and maybe it's not showing me for the current month. I'll go back to the other months and see if it'll give me that information. So it's not up here, as you guys can see. You see, it would be right here where it says... January 2022 it would be right here but it's not here so that information is not available on here but just know that Minnesota has been approved okay so I'll put approved next to it all right, then we are going to shoot up to New Hampshire January 3rd and the 21st, and then February the 3rd and then the 18th. Then we have New Jersey January the 1st through the 5th, New Mexico all month long, New York January the 12th through the 21st, but I want to double check because I don't think New York was on here um, when I checked. And as you guys can see, February's extension is not on here either, okay? So... The dates that I have, and I believe I got this information from another viewer, but the dates that I have so far are January the 12th through the 21st, okay? North Carolina, we have January 22nd through the 31st. Ohio, January the 24th or the 25th. Oklahoma, January the 10th through the 15th. Uh, Oregon, January the 10th, the 28th, and then February the 1st. Pennsylvania, we have January the 15th and then the 19th through the 22nd, the 25th through the 29th, and then March the 4th. Rhode Island, we have January the 3rd. South Carolina, we have January the 1st through the 19th for currently approved households, and then all month long, usually the first day after approval. For for new applications and then we're going to skip to texas we have january the 4th through the 7th but give it all the way up until the 31st utah january the 30th vermont february the 11th virginia january the 16th the virgin islands we have january the 22nd washington we have january the 2nd through the 20th west virginia january the 5th and then a final run february the 9th wisconsin january the 22nd and then a final run march the 12th and then wyoming is always January the 2nd through the 5th based off of the first initial of your last name. That is absolutely all we have for emergency SNAP maximum benefits for both January and for February. So I am going to take a look now and check on pandemic EBT since we're already here. We might as well take a look at it together and see if anything has changed on that front. Okay, so as you guys can see, pandemic EBT for the current school year. Let me just refresh this page. And we have, looks like we have, yeah, we definitely have more states. Delaware seems to be the new state. Um, Indiana, I'm going to look at Delaware in just a second. But for the current school year, 2021-2022, we have Delaware, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, Minnesota, New Mexico, Virginia, Wisconsin, and North Carolina. So we are going to look at Delaware and see what information may be available. I do apologize if this video is longer than usual today, but I want to give you guys this information. 
pandemic EBT school program. And this was just recent too, because it says the 24th, this plan was approved. So I'm just trying to see if I can find any payment information for Delaware. Okay. the date range it gives you guys a date range just in case you guys want to know what dates they're paying you for in delaware it says it right here for children in school it's going to be from september the 9th of 2022 i mean 2021 all the way up until june the 30th of 2022 okay let's go down here we go looks like we have some tentative payment days right here in this section, it says tentative PEBT issuance schedule. The dates on which Delaware will issue PEBT benefits. The second date is for the late submission. So February the 3rd through the August, February 3rd through August, September days, February 17th. Um, okay, wait a minute. February 3rd through August and September, I'm assuming you're gonna be paid on February the 17th, March 3rd through October and November, you're gonna be paid on March the 17th, April 7th uh, through December, January, you get paid April the 21st, and then March 5th through February and March, May 19th, and then for June, June 16th. Okay, so let me say that in a less confusing way because I just confused my own dog on self. So pretty much these are the payout dates, I'm thinking February the 17th, March the 17th, April the 17th, May the 19th, and June the 16th, okay? Let me go up and see if there's anything to suggest different for children and child care. With this schedule, if we can't start by February the 3rd, we can just move the days to the next date, and therefore, we do not have to make any schedule adjustments, okay? If you guys didn't see where I was just reading, that is this section right here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything different for children in child care. So most likely it'll be the same dates. Okay, so for Indiana, we have to pay on a quarterly basis. Ohio, we have to pay uh, monthly. Michigan, we have... They're going to start in March of 2022, and then it's supposed to be monthly. Minnesota, we have February, June, July, um, and then August, but it also says monthly. So I would just say check your cards every month because sometimes this information is very, very confusing. New Mexico, end of January, two payments. So at the end of this month, they're going to give you guys the benefits in two separate payments. Okay, Virginia, monthly, Wisconsin, monthly, and then North Carolina, end of January, and then possibility some payments will go out in February okay all right you guys I do apologize again this video was extremely long well not too long but longer than than I like it to be but I do hope that you guys got some information valuable information um, out of everything that we just found out today so I'm definitely happy we got another state that has been approved for pandemic EBT for the school year I hope that all of the other states catch up so that I can give you guys the information for those states as well but on that note you guys I hope this information was in some way helpful or useful to you guys in the least little bit don't forget to smash that like button if you haven't already because it really does help to let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing so that they can continuously push my uh, my content out there you guys we trying to glow and grow together over here as well as on my new channel which by the way if you have not subscribed definitely check the description box down below because I will have my link there for my other uh, channel and yeah you guys remember to live love and elevate and I will definitely see you guys in the next video peace y'all